So, man cavers, where's their twig in the way? Anyhow, the diaphragm has turned up. Roll the credits. Aha! Welcome to the man cave. Let the games begin. So, here we are. The diaphragms have turned up. Excellent stuff. So, in order to do this job on these old engines, on the more modern ones, you basically need a 10 mil and a quarter inch. And um, sometimes an 11. On these older ones, you need an 11 and a 13, because the tank is held on with two cylinder head bolts. And one little bolt round here. First order of business, Obviously you need a screwdriver. Flat blade and Phillips. Take the flat blade out. Lift your air filter out of the way. Pull the little rubber dicky here for you. Little air. What was that? Pull the little dicky off of there. Oh, everything seemed to be fine in there. Stop mechanisms all connected. Excellent. I think we might be in business. All right. Round this end, off camera, there's an 11 mil. You want to crack that first. Don't undo it all the way. Just crack it off. There we go. She's cracked. All right. Now, sometimes these undo with a quarter. Sometimes you've got to get a 3.8 on them. Depends. Now, that's coming. And... Don't worry about re on these again, thinking, oh, they don't go back, I've got to need a new head gasket. Baloney. Load of rubbish. As long as you don't undo all the others, it'll be fine. There we go. So we've got our two out there. We'll take this one out of this end now. And then we should be able to. I don't think there's any more, no. There we go. We should be able to manipulate this tank out. Now, these linkages on there, I mean, I know where they go, but just make a mental note. Don't go hawk it off, because you'll break all the little springs. So just unhook the little spring out of there, look. He needs to come out. There we go. Don't stretch him. And this rod here, That'll just, like, bend the carb out the way. And you'll get that out. There you go, look. See, bend that out the way. And then you've got your kill wire. Which is a case of pushing that back in there. And pulling that kill wire out. Alright, we're finished with this engine. For the minute! Move him out the way. The bit we want is this carb. Now then, there's four screws we've got to get out. There's two little quarter drives in here, look. The only reason you've got to take this bracket off is there's a screw in there. Hang about, let me zoom out a bit. There we go. There's a screw in here we need to get to, and you can't get to it because you've got to take this bracket off. But just two little quarters in there, look. <clears throat> here's our little quarter. Put him in. Take he out. Take he out. And this whole little bracket will come off. People are daunted by carburetors. Don't be. They are very, very simple. Even car carburetors. Oh, there's a mixture screw in there. Look, that's nice to know. Now... We need to take these three Phillips screws out of here. That one's too big. Ah, perfect. Sometimes these can be buggers, especially on these old engines that haven't been apart for 50 years. 
The only reason I'm taking this off really is so I can give this whole carb a clean and a blowout. And there should only be three screws hold this on. If you've got one of the later little three and a half horse bars with the little red or black primer bulb, them carbs are held on with five. And that's where your diaphragm is on them. But I'll show you how these work. Basically on these older ones, there's two little chambers underneath here in the, well, one little chamber. And underneath this cover, is where we put our new diaphragm and there's like a two-way valve in there a little diaphragm with two fingers and when you get the pulse of the crankcase the vacuum make the little fingers open and close and it opens and lets petrol in close so it can't drop back and so on and that's what pump your petrol up so your petrol get drawn up a long brass tube here and it gets pumped in and then it gets dumped into a little chamber somewhere here and that's where the main jet picks the fuel up from and any excess fuel just run over the edge back into the tank so you know you got them three screws a little blow there we go without damaging this gasket because we haven't got one of them gaskets hey excellent i think we've saved the gasket have we saved this gasket come on we want to save on that gasket if we can. Come on, that one little bit. One little tiny bit. But one tiny little bit. There we go. Alright. That should come out. There we go. And then with our rag, clean up around there. That chamber I'm talking about, I don't know whether you can see, but in there, there's like a round chamber. And this long one off the carb, the long one goes through this hole, goes into the bottom of the tank, it pumps the petrol up and dumps it in here, which is in this chamber. Hope you can see a chamber in there. And that's where... This one then picks it up to feed the engine. These are plastic, these are brass and can crack. And if these crack and draw air in, then your engine don't run very well. But, so you need to be quite delicate with these old carbs. Give her a blast. Right, there we go. There we go. Move that out of the way for a second. Now we'll get this little diaphragm changed. Let me get it and I'll show you which diaphragm it is. Alright, here's our new diaphragms. I bought two because it's always handy to have one spare. So we'll just take one of them out. There he is. Lay him on a flat surface so you don't want grit and crap on him. Yeah. Put him back in its little bag. There he is, look. Yeah. And I'll show you where he is just under here look four screws so you want your little flat blade again take these four little screws out and you'll see that diaphragm underneath there
So again, if that don't lift off, come under here, give her a little pry up. There'll be a spring as well under there and a little collar, so be careful. There we go. There's our old diaphragm. Look. There we have it. There you go. There's our old diaphragm. Now under here, there's a spring and a little collar. Take them out. I'll show you then. There it is. Don't get that spring too much stick. There you go. There's the little spring and a little collar what protects the diaphragm from the spring. Put him to one side. Now we want to blow all this out. Look at all that crap and oil got in there. Blow these little galleries out. There you go. See that? That blew out. That blew out of that tube at the bottom. Yeah. So we know we're good there. Wipe off this mating surface. Yeah. With a cloth. Give it another little blow. Just make sure you ain't got no lint in there or anything. There isn't really anything else on these carbs you can clean out. We could, and we probably will actually. We'll just pop out this main jet. So that's a 13. Pop him out. Look in there, little main jet in there. Ah, see it? Yeah, blow him out. Check your mains yet. Your needle. There it is. Make sure that's all good, which that is. The end is good. That's not all burred over or sharp. Screw him back in. Tighten him up. Now make sure if you have this out. If you take the screw out, make sure you don't have it screwed in too far when you tighten that nut down because you'll knock the end of your point off. But we're not worrying about that. In fact, what we're going to do is we're going to take this screw right out and reset the carb up. When that's running, because you can guarantee that won't be, that won't be spot on. So you can take all that out. There we go. Give it a final little check. That's all good. It's a little silver, little brass washer on there as well. Look over that spring. Don't forget that. But carbs are very, very simple. Do not get daunted by carburetors. Honestly, don't. Now to put these, to screw these all the way in. Just by hand, you don't have to give them an ooga dooga with a screwdriver. Now, that won't go no further. Undo it, one and a half turns. Half, one, one and a half. Oh, let's go two turns. There we go. That'll give us a baseline to set this up from. It will start on there. It will run on there. All right. Give our little workbench a wipe down. Give it a little blow without blowing your screws everywhere. This little cover, what go over the fuel pump. Give that a good blow. Make sure that's clean. None of them orifices are damaged, which they're not, or blocked. There's nothing going on there like that. So now we want our new diaphragm and this little spring. Put the little spring back. The little collar back. Now there's a locating pin on this. Doesn't matter which way around this goes, it'll work either way. Little locating pin, a little dowel at the back. Slip your diaphragm over that. You'll know if you got it right, because that'll only go one way, look. There we go. Perfect. Now, put your cap back on.
So we'll slip our cap back on. Always put this end screw in first, because that'll just make sure your gasket is all lined up. Yeah. So there we go. So you just do them up really lightly in some sort of sequence so they go down quite even. And once you've got them all buttoned down evenly, you can then give them a little half an ooga dooga. Yeah, there we go. Gonna get a better fitting screwdriver in there. There we go. Absolutely perfect. So that's our carburetor cleaned out. Tell you what we can do. We can just blow all this oil. Out. There we go. Now you want to try and examine this brass pipe to make sure there isn't any cracks on there because sometimes they can get little hairline cracks and they'll draw air in so if you've got one of these engines where they'll only they'll sort of they'll sort of stop running when you've got half a tank of petrol left that's probably because this pickup pipe has got a little crack in it because it's brass and it's old and then when that dropped down when the petrol level dropped down to where the crack is it don't draw petrol it draws air and there you go it stops but this tube actually, I think, is going to be all right. There you go. There's a little strainer on the end. Just make sure he's not plugged. I've blown the bowl out. So now we can reassemble this carb. By gently putting that end back in. And putting our carb back on. There we go. And I guarantee you now, this engine will run. And it will run good. Now, we're not going to about test this, though, until we've actually got it back on the lawn bug. Because I can't do my trick of putting the crank through that hole, because that's now on that engine plate. So there we have it. So now you can snug these screws down. There we go. There we go, that's our carb diaphragm done. You can see our old diaphragm. If you look, it's gone like a balloon. It's like ballooned on this side. See what I mean? Look, that's not holding its form. It's like gone, sorry there. This is like ballooned. If that makes sense, see that? That's like ballooned up. That's where the spring over the ears has sat. And that's no, not pushing that backwards and forwards. That's just putting constant pressure on it. So this diaphragm, knackered. There. So chuck him away. Basically, we want to give this engine now a blow off. Tell you what, let's put our bracket back on. We might as well put our bracket back on. 
with our little tiny quarters. One on with our little tiny quarters. There's there. That's there. Make sure our chokes still work. It does. If you're wondering why, when you put it back together, that choke's gone. That's gone too far. Look, that's hitting. Tell you for why. Here's our air filter. When you put that through there to hold the air filter on, so when that screw is there, that choke rests on that. Look. Yeah? So when your air filter's back in, your choke will correct itself. So do not worry about the choke. Right. I think we need to blow this engine off and then give it a clean up. Right. Tidy some tools up. Get this engine clean. So with the magic of video editing, our carbers back on. Air cleaner back on. And he says the air cleaner's back on. There's all our all our throttle. Oh, hang on. Hang you about. We ain't put the spring back on. And that solder's got hooked down the back of the fuel tank. Would you credit that? We have him unhooked. Hook him back on here. And there he goes. Let's get our air filter back on now. Right, next job, we need to get this engine washed down with some diesel and a paintbrush, and then we can get it sprayed white. Let's get the stuff ready. Right, so we have some old dirty diesel. We can just give this a clean down. Yeah. Like I say, these engines, when Briggs and Stratton built these, if you notice behind that tank, haven't been painted anyhow. Of course, these engines are painted, all assembled. They assemble these engines, then they paint them. So it don't matter about painting it while that's all stripped, because Briggs and Stratton never did that. So we're not going to do that. We're just going to wash it down. And paint the bugger. Maybe give that a little sand on the top here. But that's it. Come on, get in there. This will just decrease everything. Yeah.
and you're thinking this is going to be disastrous. That'll clean up lovely. She will clean absolutely lovely. Yeah. go she's all cleaning up yeah now if you're wondering what sort of preparation we're going to do on this engine I'll show you that as well just so you think, all oh, sort of preparations he doing on there. Just so we all know. Alright, if you wonder why I ain't got in these crevices, the paintbrush won't get in there any further. But, compressed air will get everywhere. Now that's been softened up. There you go, a lot of that southern stuff will just blow out there. Get all these corners out. Nip that up. Blow that all up. show you what else we're gonna do with that one of the best things to wash diesel away with hang on is good old-fashioned water that's the best stuff best stuff to rinse diesel away in. And I know what you're thinking. You're going to be thinking. You're going to wet all them points up. Now. They're under that flywheel. Under waterproof covers. You're not going to wet the points. Just rinse them off with a load of water. There we go. You'll find that water will just speed up on there. And that'll all just go straight on. There we go.
There we go. Excellent. So we need to get a clean rag now, dry that off, give it a little scotch bright, and then we can get ready to paint. So we got our panel wipe again, a grey scotch bright, tip a load on, and just give this engine a rub off. That'll basically give the cover a bit of a key, get any loose stuff off. And that panel wipe running over the engine will degrease it a bit. Yeah. We just keep give this whole thing a rub over. Then we can lay some white on the old girl. Yeah. There's a bracket there for our choke, for our throttle cable. We'll take that off and put it in the shed. Right, that's back in our little, our little place where they all live. So now we can just clean all this plate off what we done yesterday. Give this engine a final wipe down while that's all wet. Just give her a little clean up. Yeah. Wipe our base plate down. So our engine's now had a quick degrease. Like I say, this engine ain't got to be perfect. The whole mower ain't got to be perfect. I just want it to look smart. I don't want it to be so bloody nice I don't want to use it. Do you know what I mean? I got other little red Mac I did. That still sits in the back of the workshop, covered up with a sheet because I don't want to dirty the damn thing up by using it which is a waste because it just sits there there we go there you go put a load of panel wipe on that's really fast evaporating so that'll just hopefully get everything buttoned off there we go
right that's it we should be about ready to just lay a coat of white on this i want to just mask up this recoil because we don't want to spray that handle mr woodlouse need to get off there before he kills himself there we go yeah let me get rid of this panel white So, here we are. Why is the camera all on the tittle? Here we go. Here we are. Last up. Spray gun. We have some white in here. Now, this is just an off white that I tend to use for lawn mowing. So, this. Oh, we haven't masked that little handle up, look. There, oh dear. Let me get the tape. There we go. Like I said, we're not going to the moon with this. It's only a long hour. There we go. Right, let's see about getting some colour on him. Whoa, whatever happened there? Air cap. Right, here we are. Back again, demasked, gun cleaned out. Here is our engine and our engine plate ready to go on the lawn bug. There we go, isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? That's not the only paintwork I've been doing today. Somebody let me loose on a Range Rover to do bumper repairs on the corner. The guy had caught his gate post right down here. And he caught his gate post 
right down here both sides so I've had to do a little bumper repair on this this morning you know DA out that's why the DA is there DA out and bit of prime blow some silver on and there we go that's what we've been doing this morning anyhow you're more interested in this not that bloody old thing yeah here we go we want this Yes, and here's our engine. Yes, all done. Right, there ain't a lot we can do till that engine's dry. Uh, yeah. Like I said, tomorrow I'm off to a rally, Swan and Morley. So unfortunately, this engine won't be able to get back on the machine until I'm back on Monday. So unfortunately, there'll be no more videos of this until at least Monday night. Of course, I'd like to say I'm at a rally, but there will be a video of the rally if you'd like to see it. If you'd like to see what, well, it's a little tiny show, it's nothing like Stratza or whatever. It's a small show on a village green. Basically, it's on a playing field, but it's a nice little rally and I like it. But I'll probably do a walk round of the engines and the classic cars that are there. I'm taking this engine, that engine. So, yes, you will see both of them. And, yeah, this will be Swan and Morley tomorrow. Right, I'm off. Speak to you later. Bye-bye for now. Ha-ha! Beautiful.